uh, title for you because there's so much in it that I don't want to take away from the story. But if I had to put a title to this, it would be David's Sin. Amen. David's sin. Amen. Now, Father God, I come right now in the name of Jesus. Repent of everything I've done, God, that was not according to your word. Be your just around me, God. Be God and protect me, oh God, while I'm here. Give me your word to your people, oh God. I gotta ask you right now in the name of Jesus, God, to fill the empty vessel. Because I know you are full of fashion, Lord. I know that you can feed me whatever you want me to say to your people, to this fire of Christ. Lord, I can't allow me to die in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. 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 So, I had to find out why Absalom wanted to kill his brother, Abner. And for who you don't know, David's firstborn was not Solomon. I know all, we always talk about Solomon this and Solomon that. But Abner was David's firstborn. But I wanted to know why Absalom wanted to kill his brother, Abner. Right. So it all derived in chapter 7, seven chapter 11. When David, you know, David and Bathsheba, David sent this woman, she was baby. Uh -huh. And he told his servant, he sent for her, she went to him. Now, y'all know the story, but I have to tell the story so I can, you know, you know, uh, so you understand why Absalom killed Adam. All right. All right. So he sent his servant and he got Bathsheba. Yeah. And Bathsheba and David, they had a child. So, the lady that, the woman that she was, that David slept with, was Uriah's wife. All right, all right. So David, when he found out that, that she was pregnant, when David found out that Bathsheba was pregnant, he had Uriah to come back, I'm trying to show you because I know y'all mad not really right. just to what's going on this morning. Right. So David sent for Uriah. Mm -hmm. Uriah came back. Wanted Uriah to sleep with Bathsheba mm -hmm. because he don't slept with somebody else's wife right. and got her pregnant. All right. All right. So to cover that sin. He asked you right to come back from the war mm -hmm. to sleep with his wife. Yeah. All right. All right. But Uriah was committed to David. Yeah. He didn't want to go and just be with his wife while all of his comrades are out in the field doing war. Say that, say that, say that. So that didn't work. So he got Uriah drunk. All right. Told Uriah, go ahead, go and lay with your wife. He now he went to go lay with Uriah. He slept on the steps of the couch. So I'm trying to show you. So Uriah went and told David he didn't even go home. Uriah. Do not sleep with Bathsheba. Yeah. So they had to fix that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Now let me tell you something. Hmm. David sent a letter to Joab. Yeah. Yeah. But guess who he sent the letter by? Yeah. He sent it by Uriah. <laughs> now, I've always said he carried his own death sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Because he sent the letter, told Uriah, to go take this to Joab. Oh. And in the letter, it says to put Uriah out on the front line. Oh. All right. He did just that. Oh, Lord. Not only did Uriah get killed, but some of David's men got killed. Yeah. Yeah. And so in chapter 12, Nathan tells David a story. Because David had slept with Uriah's wife, 
Uriah had his wives and concubines. Yeah. He had plenty. Yeah. He had wives and talking wives. Concubines and talking concubines. <laughs> but why would he sleep or want to sleep with Uriah's wife? Yeah. The only thing that he had. Yeah. Well, he had plenty. Right. All right. All right. So Nathan tells David a story about the rich man and the poor man. The poor man only had one land, one land. One land. only one, uh -huh. just one. David had lambs on top of lambs on top of lambs on top of lambs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I mean, the poor man, the rich man, had a lamb on top of lamb on top of lamb. So he, told, he tells him a story. The rich man and the poor man. So one came to dinner. And mind you, the rich man already had a lot of lamb. But the poor man only had one. Follow me. The rich man had to serve dinner. Instead of him taking one of his lambs, he takes the poor man's lamb. The only one that he had. The only one he had. And Nathan tells him, I had to write this down, he said, The poor man had one lamb that grew up with him with his children. Uh, rich man had this came from them. Then he robbed the poor man of his lamb. Uh, right. And then they said, this man should die. Uh, then no, he was talking about himself. Uh, right. Then Nathan says, Nathan told David, you are the man. Yeah. He said, who did this? You are the man. You done it. Yeah. You know, took the right wife, so that was, you got wives to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And you're right, I only had one. And to cover your sins, you're going to send him on the front line. So you. All right, you're the one. God made you the king. Yeah. You have everything. Yeah. But you killed your riders. Then he told me, he said, you, your wives, your children will suffer for this. Yeah. Right. So in chapter 13, now when I was reading this, this story gets good and good and good. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, you know, I had to stop reading because it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Second Samuel 13, chapter says, the first verse says, it came to pass after this. Remind you, Nathan already told him, David, Joel is coming. Second yeah. Samuel 13, chapter, the first verse says, it came to pass after this, that Absalom, the son of David, him, their sister, who name was Tamar. Right. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Right. And Amnon was so vexed that he felt sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything. So David had all these children, but they had different parents, mothers. And so Amnon fell in love with Tamar, and the Bible said, which was Absalom's sister. When he said in this first verse, he said that was Absalom his brother. So if Absalom is your brother, so Tamar is your sister, right? Yeah. So the scripture says that the son of David loved, loved her, which was Amnon. Now we have a, I have a little problem with this because love can mean different things. You can take love, you can say you love your wife, you can say you love your spouse. But it's going to be different how you love your children or how you love your grandchildren. Amen. Amen. Now, this is an English word. We can interpret this word any kind of way we want to. 
But the love that Adnan had for Tamar, yeah. to me, when I read this in the Bible, say it was just lust, because you're going to find out later that it was love. It was not love. Right. Verse 2, it says that Adnan was so big, he had that thought, not so much weight that he wanted to take him out so badly that he lost a lot of weight. Right. Tamar was a virgin, and it would be wrong for him to do anything to her, because yes, she was a virgin, and because her brother was Absalom. Amnon right. had a friend whose name was Jemadad. Now, you discover he used the word friend, but he really, he's really not much of a friend because a friend is going to count you. Counsel him in a way with Tamar. So he wanted her, wanted him to go ahead and sleep with Tamar. Jonadab is going to set it up. Jonadab is actually Amnon's cousin, which is David's son, a brother's son. Jonadab is son of Shemir. Shemir was a brother of David, which makes Jonadab the cousin of Amnon. Here he is called just a friend. Now, Jonadab was very a crafty man and very sneaky. Now, he was supposed to be giving his, his cousin some advice to go ahead and try to sleep with uh, Lady Alan Tabor. Uh-huh. And he said to him, why are you, the king's son, becoming thinner every day? Is something wrong with you? Now, today, there would have been a compliment for some people who tried to lose weight. When somebody walked up to you and said, something wrong or are you becoming thinner? But in this case, it was not a compliment. He's looking thinner, he's looking gone. You know, people like, man, you like the gone lady. <laughs> you are the king's son, the crown prince. He was next in line. If something would happen today, he would be next in line to be the king. Will you not tell me what's wrong? And Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. So Jeremiah said to him, Lie down on your bed, pretend to be sick, and when your father comes to see you, tell him so that Tamar will come and give you some food, prepare you some food. All right. That I might see, he wants to may see it and eat it from her hand. Then Amnon lay down and pretended to be evil. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please ask Tamar, my sister, now he's her sister, his sister to come and make a cup of cakes for me in my sight, that I might eat from my hand. And David sent Tamar, saying, go to your brother Adonai's house and prepare food for him. And she did just that, because that's her brother. But he could have asked for somebody else. And she even had a special garden. So she was a king's daughter, so she was a princess, so she had a garden, like, uh, remember Joseph? who his brother had took him and pretended like he was dead because of the, you know. He had a garment, she had a garment like, a garment of color. So Tamar went to her brother Absalom's house where he was laying down. And when she took flour and kneaded it, so she, so she's there in his presence, making cakes in his sight and baked the cake. She took the, took the pan and placed it out before him, but he refused to eat. The Anna said, have everyone to leave the room. Go out from me. Clear the room. And they left him. Then Anna said to Tamar, bring the food into the bedroom that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes, which he made, and brought them to Anna, her brother, in the bedroom. And when she had brought the food to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, lay with me, my sister. And she answered him, no, my brother, do not force me to do such thing. No such thing has been done in Israel. Do not do this grateful thing to me, said Tamar. Now let me tell y'all something. When somebody tells you no, it means no, amen? In verse 13, she continues to reason with him. Tamar says, where could I take my shame? And as for you, you will be like one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king. She's trying to reason with him. 
speak to the king, for he would not withhold me from you. Yeah. Now I doubt that David would say, oh yeah, sure, she is trying to negotiate with him. Yeah. Now she's trying to reason with him. Lust and reasoning are enemies. You cannot reason with lust. You cannot reason with passion. It is an unreasonable thing to try to do. They are not related. They are enemies to each other. So she tried to reason with him, but here's a man filled with passion. Amnon just really, really wanted her. And when you feel, when you feel with lust, there's a negotiating with the flesh. That's why the New Testament says, when it comes to dealing with the flesh, kill it. Crucify it. Sell it to the flesh. It's not negotiable. It's not negotiable. You can't tell flesh, oh, I can get a little bit here and then a little bit later on. You can't do that, no. You got to keep on continuing to cut it off. Cut it off, you can't. No, don't do that. Amnon was, Amnon was strong in the table and forced her to lay with him. Then Amnon handed that seat. How are you going to love somebody if you lose the weight? And you just got to all of a sudden you hate her after the fact. How are you going to be like, that's not love. That is not love. And I hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated was greater than really how he loved her. I think it was his hormones, you know. <laughs> that can get you in trouble. That can get you in trouble. The tell no matter I love you, I love you being, you know, when that happens, you know, you don't like them, you can't stand to see them. Amen. Come on, man. Amen. Then he he had he laid with her. And then he said, I hate you. Real strong. He said, I hate you. Lust and reason is our worst enemies. Lust and hatred are relatives. They are related to each they are related to each other. Because it says he loved her, but he lusted after her. Lust is different from love because if he had honestly, he could say, Oh, I love you. But in reality, you say, I love myself. That's love. Love says, I love me, but I want you. Love says, I'm concerned for you in your feelings. If he really loved her, he would have stopped when she begged him. She said, please don't force yourself on me. When he said, I love you, of course, she should have been concerned about her feelings. He said he loved you. When you say you love somebody, be concerned about them. Don't be pretend, don't be pretenders, amen? amen. But he didn't love Tamar. First Corinthians 13 said, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, love does not puff up, love does not help behave rudely. It does not seek its own, it is not provoked, it thinks no evil, it does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoice in truth. When you say you love somebody, love them. Amen. Amen. Stop being pretenders. Deny yourself. So she said, You know that these the evil said to be away is worse than the other said to be to me. No one should be treated like Tamar had been treated. No one, man or female. But he would not listen to her. And then he called his servant, who attended him and said to them, put this woman away from me. And he bolted the door. Now you know somebody hates you if they bolt the door. Real love? Really? Not so much. And now she had her robe of many colors. For the king virgin told him they wore this type of apparel. And then this servant put her in both her and, and closed the door behind her. Then came up, put ashes on her head. Sign of mourning. Pour her robe of many colors of another sign of mourning. The coat means that she belongs to the royal family. Right. Amen. Right. And that she was a virgin. Right. And came up, laid her hand on her head and went away crying bitterly. And, yeah. and Absalom, her brother. Right. Y'all listen to this. This is being good and good. Her brother said to her, Has Adnan your brother been with you? 
But now I'm all your people. All right. <laughs> my sister. He is your brother. Do not take his thing to heart. When somebody says something like that, hey, <laughs> be aware. Yeah. Yeah. And they already know the thing that was done was wrong, and they tell you, be at peace. So Tamar remained in Gethsemane and her brother Aslan house. But when King David heard it, he said, he was angry. Yeah. All right. But he didn't do anything. Yeah. I know you the crown prince, Aslan, but your daddy should sit you down and talk to you. Yeah. But he didn't hear you there. He did. All right. Now, at this point, perhaps the reason he's only got angry and didn't do anything because of his affliction with, you know, Bathsheba, what he, what he did with her, even though he didn't uh, force Bathsheba, but he took somebody, he took something that was not his. Yeah. Like Adam took uh, Tamar's virginity from her that was not his to take. So maybe he don't get off that and he didn't do anything. His son didn't watch a day. The story is interesting. Do anything he feel like. He does anything he feel like. He blew, blew it up, aired of himself. He didn't have to have a more ground from which he demanded justice of his son. What he did was also man. Remember when the book of the man's wife committed the adultery about Sheba? Got pregnant, killed her husband. He didn't have a more. He just had his son, the royal prince, his firstborn. But he still should have had said something. Now listen, there's no right perfect. And if you are a parent who failed in the past and you are getting beat up because of the devil's person in your ear saying, no right, you have no right to mess with your children as yes, you do. Amen. Put yourself in that place. Let them know, da 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 this, da 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 that, whatever you have to say. So something like this won't come to pass. Or if it means when I come towards your family. Mm -hmm. After all, when we all are young, we so like our own oaths, truth is still true. Of yourself as a bad example and introduce them how to live a good life. Verse 22, Absalom spoke to his brother Adnan, being a good or bad. But Absalom hated Adnan. But Absalom hated Adnan. Because he had forced his sister Tamar and he came to pass after these two four years. So we just pour, sit, and wait. Let it slide for just two, two four years. The Absalom had a sheep share of their hazard, which is the near emperor of the whole century of this story. So Absalom invited all the king's sons. He invited all the king's sons. Sheep share, they was like for shepherds, like today, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl Friday. Some will have a party, you don't invite your guests, you don't have a good meal, and most of the time you're going to be drinking, drinking is involved, and you will bring out whatever it is to drink to watch the game. But Absalom came to the king and said, kind of noticed. Your servants have sheep shears. Please let the king and his servants go with your servants. But the king said, you're absolutely right, my son, but let us not all go. Let's be burdened. Oh, and verse 25 and 26 says, Then Absalom said, If not you, please let my brother Abner go with us. Right. Now the idea of Abner is born, the suggestion is since you, the king won't go, let your firstborn go and represent you. Right. And the king said, Why should he go with you? Yeah. Now, when he said for his sister Tamar to come and feed him, all of my mind was wondering why the king David is saying, why do you want Tamar to come and feed you? I know you're the crown prince, and you next in line, but then you ask Absalom why should he go with you? But you didn't say why should Tamar come and feed you? Hmm. I think he was suspicious. I mean, after all, Absalom's sister had been raped. They really didn't do anything at all. Why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him. And so 
He let Amnon and all the king's sons go. Now that's why he commanded his servants saying, pay attention. Oh. Watch now. Without my heart is merry with wine. Just like David got Uriah drunk. He said, watch now. Without my heart is merry with wine. And when you, when I say to you, strike Amnon and kill him. Do not be afraid. Because I commanded you, Absalom. Be courage and valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Abnon, and Abnon had commanded that all the king's sons arose, and each one of them lay on their knees. Right. I see some, some similarities between David with Bathsheba, Uriah, and what Absalom did here with his brother Abnon, first of all, David killed Uriah in order to get something that was not his, Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, the way I see Absalom killed his brother in order to get something as well. Yeah. If he killed Adnan, maybe he eventually get it wrong. All right. So both of them were killed in order to get something. Right. It is something. Yeah. David did not personally kill your wife, right, but he had your right killed by the sword of another man. Right. So the Absalom told his servants, "Now when the guys get him drunk, kill him." Which bring up the third scenario. Alcohol was involved in both Uriah trying to get Uriah. They trying to get Uriah drunk. Come on, man. Have some more wine. Go home to your wife. They can, you know, he's tipsy. And you're going to lose the toll and go home and sleep with your wife. But you already know, I already told you, so that didn't happen. It didn't work. The line is really floating. People have lost control except for the servant who do the deeds. So the servant Absalom did to Abnon and Absalom had commanded, and the king's sons arose. Each one of them fled on his news and came to pass. While they were on the way, the news came to David that Absalom had killed all the king's sons. Oh. Alright. Alright. Y'all, that's fake news. Y'all heard of fake news before? Mm. Y'all always believe what you hear? He tried to make it seem better than what it was, but all day the soldiers did not get killed. Right. Only one. All right. His name was Abner. Uh, remember Jonadab? He's the guy that he had Abner trying to sleep with him. I remember him. He's the one who brought the news to David. Jonadab, the son of Sir and David, brother Abner said, Did not my lord suppose that they had killed all the young men? The king's son, for only Amnon was dead. Therefore, before he, by the commandments of Absalom, he said, the term, the term is on the day Amnon forced his sister to take on. I see Jonah exactly how he, the scripture said he is cunning. I think he was really good at reading people. He would be in a situation, he would quickly read you and study people. You know, y'all know anybody like that? I know I do. To study you. Watch you, your every move, know what you like, know what you don't like. You know about like this? I know I do. You kept those people, because they were set you up. You tell them you like this, they're going to go get it. You're going to go get it the wrong way. When it's presented to you, then you in trouble. Amen. Amen. You got to be very quick of people who reach you. I know some people like this, so I have to stay away from them. Especially they know. If you've been faithful yeah. to your spouse, yeah. right. they bring what you like. Y'all talking, right? Yeah. Yeah. They know how you like how a man looks. They know how you like how a woman looks. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to find something out just like that. They're going to bring it to you, yeah. set you up. Yeah. Go on in there and tell nobody. Uh, <laughs> when the cameras are playing yeah. and you don't know the cameras in the room, yeah. there you go. And they say, you know, you, don't, you can't say you didn't do it. This is on the tape. It's all on the tape. There's no way of hiding. Stop telling everybody what you like and you don't like. Don't do that. Keep some things to yourself. Especially the Bible, you know, they try to get you in trouble. Keep those things to yourself. Amen. And so here's Jeremiah, probably hoping he could get in with David 
by giving him accurate news. Because after all, he's so concerned because he got Amnon to force himself on Tamar, which was his idea. Kind of crappy from being a violin to do right. That's your cousin, man. Tell him don't be sick with, with that's your sister. Is somebody trying to tell me that Jared trying to speak with Lakina? I'm like, what? Amen. It's going to be in some type of way. I'm going to be in some type of way. And I'm going to go bring past the chicken. And we're going to say, no, y'all can't do this. Can't do it. No way. But he's, he's leaving that part out. Now, therefore, let not my Lord the king take this thing in heart to think that all the king's sons are dead, but only Adam is dead. What I believe from this message myself is always take wise counsel advice from Christian people, somebody who's going to hold me up accountable. I miss my dad. I miss my dad because I can share with him, I can tell him what I want to do. But then he'll tell me that's not right. That's not right. Don't do that. God will take care of that situation. Find people who's going to give you wise counsel. Wise counsel. Don't let them tell you what they think should happen because you're going to end up in trouble. You're going to end up in trouble. And then if you got a conscience, your conscience should bother you. I say my husband all the time, I'm not a good liar. I'm not a good liar to nobody. That box, if I lie to you, it's going to tear me up. Yeah. That's why I always tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Then I won't be in trouble. Right. So if you don't come to me if you said that and that day, because I'm going to tell you, hey, no, mm -mm, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Even if you want to, don't do it. Amen. That's not a God. And if you know me, if you hung around me long enough, you already know I'm going to tell you, that's not a God. Right. You're not doing that. All right. If you brought it to me, Teddy, you brought it to Rome from back. But I thank God that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who can tell us the truth at all times. He don't have to fake. He don't have to tell us. Uh, do anything to make you seem like it's right. He's going to tell you the truth because God, Jesus, the Christ, is the truth. Because when he went on the cross and he died for our sins, he died for us. He died for us to justify that we should not be doing anything that's not of God. Amen. 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 I thank God that He put the Spirit in His hand. I thank God that He put the Spirit in His feet and His side. I thank God that He brought me He's born of God and God for me. Because I know I couldn't have done nothing. I know that I couldn't put those crowns of thorns on my head because I'm going to tell let me down from here. Because the storm hurts. Don't spirit in my side. Don't spirit in my feet. Don't spirit in my hand. Don't you know I am a daughter of Christ? I am a daughter of God. So why are you trying to hurt me? Because I'm telling you the truth. Stand for truth. At any given time, stand for truth. We are Christians. We are baptized believers. We are a body of Christ. And if we're going to live on this earth, the word of God stands. Whatever the word of God says, it's going to stand. If you want to see the Father, which is in heaven, we want to do exactly what the word says to you. Amen? Amen. Thank you for your time. Amen. The door of the church is open.